Yeah. 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 Indiana Pacers guard Tyrese Halliburton might not have the same level of national fame as WNBA star Caitlin Clark, but they are still close friends. Halliburton welcomed Clark with open arms when the former Iowa star was drafted by the Indiana Fever in April, and since then, the two Indiana icons have grown quite close. Hope you all seeing what 22 doing at Gainbridge, Tyrese Halliburton wrote from courtside on August 17th. Caitlin Clark, a.k.a. number 22, had just made a beautiful pass to Kelsey Mitchell, covering almost three-fourths of the court. The Indiana Pacers star, who knows a thing or two about good passes, had stood up with his hands over his head in disbelief. He was a CC fan, and he kept in touch with his fellow student-athletes who attended college in Iowa. Let's see what Halliburton said. I mean, I, I went to FIBA games before this last year. I, I, I went to a target. I just I love who. Um, so to see kind of the explosion of women's basketball and uh, for a big piece of that being the fever and that being right in, in my backyard, I think was really, really cool to see. And I went to as many games as I could. I grew pretty close with Connor McCaffrey being an intern with us last year. Um, and then we are, have grown to be pretty close with Caitlin. It's awesome to see Tyrese Halliburton supporting women's basketball and recognizing the fever's impact. Uh, me, her, uh, him, and my girlfriend Jade all have a group chat that we talk in pretty, pretty often uh, about everything. So it's been cool to just grow um, a friendship with 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 her. And, um, I don't want to be like everybody's. Everybody just wants to like get more from her, take more from her, uh, like get more answers to things, and and I don't want to be that. I just. Um, we're, we're friends. And I His friendship with Caitlyn just shows how talented and influential she is in the sport. Caitlyn boyfriend is so supportive came to see Clark with Tyrese Halliburton. Well, in this building here tonight, of course, the WNBA's assist leader in Caitlyn Clark and the NBA's assist leader. The WNBA phenom has been turning heads all season long, and the Indiana Pacers player is rooting for the state's sister team. Present in August for the Fever, completing their sweep of the Phoenix Mercury, Halliburton had been left impressed by Clark and Combe, and even shared a hug greeting with her post the game. As his latest statement reveals, the two stars from Indy are text buddies too. Let's see what Alex Golden tweeted. Tyrese Halliburton said that he, Caitlin Clark, her boyfriend, Connor McCaffrey, and his girlfriend Jade, have a group chat that they talk in regularly. The Indiana Fever after the Olympic break was on a red-hot streak, and even Pacers coach Rick Carlisle was spotted outside Gainbridge at one Fever vs. Sky game. Just after Caitlin Clark had been drafted, she met Tyrese Halliburton for the first time and was happy to see him in the same city franchise. Clark said, City, part of this organization, how much are you looking forward to spending some time with the rival, well, the former rival in Tyrese Halliburton and, and of course, the, the Pacer players as well? Yeah, I honestly, I've watched the Pacers very closely. I, my boyfriend works for the Pacers, so I've become quite a fan. Um, but, I mean, Tyrese is, is incredible, and I just want to congratulate him. Obviously, being a, named to the USA national team today um, is pretty special. It's a really hard accomplishment, and um, obviously he played for a very terrible team in college, but um, <laughs> it's nice to, to be in the same city now and, um, you know, the way, I think the thing I love about him is the way he passes the ball. Like, I watch, watch his game, and it's just incredible what he can do. So, um, but all of them across the board. Um, I think Coach Carlisle has been tremendous for them, and it's been a lot of fun to watch, and, and you know, I hope they beat the Bucks. <laughs> Let's see Tyrese's reaction while watching Clark performance. Defense. One of our prettiest of the year. The WNBA Friday Night Spotlight is presented by State Farm. Tyrese Halliburton, who led the NBA in assists. Of course, Caitlin Clark here tonight. When Clark had that length of the court pass. Patent coach Christy Side said it was important just to get her feet underneath her. But to no surprise, you guys. Extracurricular here. Mitchell and Natasha Clark. To the shot that she took from Cloud. 
which hurts a flagrant or a technical. Bucket. Clark attacking, gets inside, working over Cloud, draws the foul. Into the paint, staying poised, trying to figure out where the defense is at. Here in the third quarter, Clark step back on a deep two. Oh, gets the shooter, Clark. Does Clark see the clock? Hand off Samuelson. Who buries a four? Tyrese is a true example of friendship. Let's see what Tyrese said. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for her to be here. Um, I think it brings a lot of excitement to the city and, you know, a city with a lot of young talent already as it is and adding her. Um, you know, she's one of the faces of women's basketball and for her to be here and under the same roof, you know, I think is really exciting for me and I think a lot of people in our organization and uh, just look forward to, you know, uh, watching her grow throughout the process, watching her get better. Um, looking forward to actually being able to cheer for her now. Uh, Clark's boyfriend, Connor McCaffrey, is also a basketball player now in the role of an assistant coach for Butler. He was previously a basketball development coordinator for the Pacers, but Tyrese Halliburton had wished him well for the new opportunity. While Halliburton's girlfriend Jade Jones might be the odd one out as the non-basketball playing member of this group, the famous NBA wag has not been indifferent to the sport. While the current Pacers point guard shown on the court, Jones could be found courtside as a cheerleader for the team. The couple has been together since 2019, while their friends started dating in 2023. Tyrese Halliburton has shown plenty of support to Caitlin Clark in her rookie season, but the Fever Guard is equally a big fan of him. It's a mutual admiration society. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Tyrese had said, I would love to be able to interact with her more. It's great that we have Connor, McCaffrey, Clark's boyfriend, in our franchise so I can talk to Connor and see how she's feeling kind of through him a little bit. Of course, now McCaffrey will be in a different team away from the NBA, but in the NCAA. Nevertheless, while this friendship might be scattered across the city, Caitlin Clark and Halliburton still play at the same arena. While Caitlin Clark's season has now ended and Halliburton's will begin soon, each of these in a group of four will certainly be rooting for the rest. Hey, history tonight, Caitlin Clark. Oh, no, she did. Yes, yeah, she did. Yes, she did. Hey, she needed eight to break the record, scored the first eight points, scored 49, 49. on the night. Nah, 49. 49. That's a heat check right there. 49? Yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, congratulations, Caitlin Clark. You are a monster, girl. Yes, you are did. incredible. I still Kelsey haven't gotten this record. I still hadn't got a chance to see a play in person. I want to do that. Oh, we got the Caitlin Clark effect has come to an end, but not before setting another record. For her final game of the season in the playoffs, the viewership averaged 2.5 million and peaked at 3.4 million viewers. She also won the AP WNBA Rookie of the Year award unanimously. Off the court, she secured endorsement deals with Nike and Wilson. The latter deal made her the only player other than Michael Jordan to receive signature treatment. MJ is known for setting the blueprint for the athletes, and Fever president spoke about how Clark took it forward. Let's see what Allison Barb said about Clark. So Atlanta would normally have 3,000, 4,000 people. Now they have 17,000 people, and they sold 1,000 standing room only tickets. So when we walked into the arena, people were on that third balcony looking down at the tops of our players' heads to watch. It's it's. It's really hard to take in. After a few away games and all of the sellouts, Caitlin asked the WNBA if they would pay spot bonuses to the away team players. She said, wow. we're, ma we're making all this new revenue, and I would like the away team to benefit from that. Could they get a spot bonus? So that's the heart of Caitlin Clark. I mean, that's a classy, amazing yeah. person. In one of her interview, Allison said, so the people at Nike told me that the thing that Caitlin has done is also similar to what Tiger did in that they brought new fans to the sport. So Michael Jordan energized and became a role model for all the kids. Caitlin's got that she's brought new fans to it. But she's even more than that in that she's 22. So she came right out of college and hit, you know, very successful. Caitlin Clark is truly a game changer. She's inspiring a whole new generation of fans. To establish how successful the former Hawkeye is, we will just look at the attendance record. Last year, the Fever was the second worst franchise in the league, with an average of 4,067 fans. This season, the team set the top two records for fan attendance, the WNBA record with a total home attendance of 340,715. 
plus the 20,711 fans for the Fever and the Washington Mystics in Washington, D.C. set a single-season attendance record. Let's see what Robert Little BSO tweeted. Caitlin Clark asked the WNBA could her opponents get a bonus or extra money because the away team was making extra money from her selling out their arenas. WNBA said no, and CC never publicly spoke on trying to help. Let's see what Nancy Lieberman said before about Clark. All right, you've done a couple of Caitlin. Cape, how many games have you done, Caitlin Clark? Uh, a couple. Uh, I went to see her in college. We got to be friends. He won my award, and uh, I promised I'd go see her play, and I did her last game in Iowa. Uh, I recently did the game uh, in Dallas, the WNBA game. Um, She's just exceptional. In recent interview, Nancy talked about the impact of Clark on WNBA. Which is okay. Yeah. But damn, where's where's Caitlin Clark's teammates? Mm -hmm. I'd be pissed as shit at my teammates that nobody came to my defense. You know, you know, Gretzky had a, had an enforcer. Michael Jordan had Oakley. I mean, that that's honestly, it's just bullshit. This is this has to be better. Indiana has to be better. Somebody has to come to this kid's, uh, I don't want to say red. Totally agree. Caitlin needs her teammates to back her up just like they had had her support. Absolutely. Caitlin Clark was the only reason that bring more audience to watch WNBA as she created opportunities for everyone in the league. Caitlin Clark is amazing. It will be so cool to see her shine in next season and have legends like Nancy Lieberman support her. Let's see what K-Max said about Clark. The WNBA is messing up the bag. They're uh -oh. dropping the ball with Caitlin Clark. Talk to me. They said, we already know that they're going to come out and those vets going to beat the brakes off of Caitlin Clark. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. And people are not going to be, all of a sudden, the interest level is going to fall, right? They said, it's better to let Caitlin Clark come out this season and be on fire. Yeah. yeah. Get every. K Mac is spot on. The WNBA needs to recognize Caitlin Clark's potential and not drop the ball on her, as she's a major draw for fans and can really elevate the league's excitement in next season. It happened in the, in the game opener. You know, we need to tighten up on that. Now, well, what, what are you saying? saying? What are you saying? Yeah, well, a lot of people said right. that was part of the Jordan rules. They, that you can't you, yeah, you can touch go. it. Because yeah. so, she got so, two so, quick so, fouls. They called the first, two quick fouls on her. That was the her. first thing that came to mind. I said, did we make Jordan? Let's see what Clark responds on this comparison with Jordan. Never thought I'd ask this question in my journalism career. Uh, mm -hmm. Caitlin, uh, you went from the Jordan shrug, and mm -hmm. I looked at, there's a couple of photos and videos of you after hitting threes. You started sticking your tongue out. Like, have you gone from the Jordan shrug, like the Jordan tongue out after a big shot? Honestly, sometimes I don't even know. You just get so excited once you hit a shot. Um, I think the Jordan shrug is still the go-to, though. <laughs> Let's see the amazing Michael Jordan in court from past days. This round of Stansberry. Now, Michael Jordan told me he had something special. He may be trying to take off from the free throw line, a la Julius Irving. Let's see what happens. He kind of measured it from there. He's going back, back. That brain may well be it. The people are excited. They like this. I can hear his engines revving now. Here's Jordan Old ready to Air take off. In <laughs> Chicago. This is not the first time Michael Jordan got compare with other athletes. Let's see what Jordan said about comparing him with other athletes. Is he playing? I don't know. <laughs> no, I just think that, you know, we play in different eras. He's, he's an unbelievable player. Yeah, he's one of the best players in the world, uh, if not the best player in the world. Uh, I know it's a natural tendency to compare eras to eras, and you know, it's going to continue to happen. I'm a fan of his. I love watching him play. But it's, you know, as you can see, our, our league is starting to expand on very talented players. And, they, you know, I think he's made his mark. He will continue to be so, do so over a period of time. But when you start the comparisons, I think it is what it is. Similar to K-Max's thoughts, even Nancy Lieberman drew parallels between Mitchell Jordan and Clark. It's not a Caitlin thing. It's a people thing. I mean, people were so jealous of Michael Jordan back in 1984. UNC Chicago Stadium was half empty prior to him arriving. The stadiums were filling up then. TV wanted him and the Bulls on every game. 
Not to forget the Jordan brand has hit $7 billion in revenue this year, despite the drop in sales for Nike. Earlier this month, Hall of Famer spoke to Stephen A. Smith and was on board the Clark hype train. With all the parallels being drawn, let's look back at the time when Michael Jordan broke the viewership record. Let's see what Magic Joson said about Clark. Players, mm -hmm. uh, Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, who many are saying are the Larry Bird and Magic Johnson of the WNBA. Mm -hmm. Do you like that when you hear that? I like it, and they are. Were you treated as roughly as they have been treated when you... Even legend like Magic appreciate Clark. That's impressive. Now let's see how well Clark played. Ball kept alive. Another feed and center, and Stokey finishes! Clark's eighth assist, and the Big Ten all-time assist record is hers and hers alone! Caitlin Clark. Behind the back, on the spin, to the hole, and one! And right here, just staying on balance, taking the contact, getting the and one. Dick Ebersol, the former chairman of NBC Sports in 1999, said, It's unique to have been in a partnership with the NBA for eight years, and to have had this fairy dust sprinkled on us. Now we have to reintroduce this generation of stars. But will we get Babe Ruth tomorrow? No. He had no problem highlighting Mikael Jordan over any other sport or athlete. Well, because during the 1998 season, the eight Bulls telecasts averaged a 6.5 rating, which was 71% better than the 17 other broadcasts. Not to mention, the Bulls' 1998 playoff games minus the finals averaged a 10.9 rating, 102% above telecasts without Chicago. Game 6 and Jordan's last game at the time produced a whopping 22.3 rating. I'd be crazy to say that there weren't a large number of people who watched the finals just because of Michael. Ebersol even compared MJ to Muhammad Ali. Did Wide World of Sports show Muhammad Ali too much in the 1960s? It's what the public wants. So yes, there are athletes once in a generation to come and change the landscape of sports. Surely the Caitlin Clark effect will continue to have a similar impact after her tremendous first season in the WNBA. WNBA players facing racist abuse from fans during a playoff game. I guess this is why they call them fanatics. WNBA rookie phenom Caitlin Clark has finished her first pro season and has already left an undeniable impact on the league. In just one year, Clark has been credited with drawing countless new followers to help the league break attendance and TV ratings records. However, Clark does not approve of all the league's new followers. During the Indiana Fever's exit interviews Friday after the team's season-ending playoff loss to the Connecticut Sun, Clark was asked about a statement released by the WNBA that condemned racist, derogatory, or threatening comments directed at players, coaches, and other figures in the league. The statement came after Sun Forward. Alyssa Thomas accused Fever fans of racism. Clark denounced anyone following the WNBA who makes prejudicial comments toward players. Let's see what Clark said. Yeah, it's, it's definitely upsetting. I don't think there's nobody in our league should be facing any sort of racism, hurtful, disrespectful, hateful comments and threats. Um, you know, those aren't fans. Those are. It's heartbreaking to see Clark and other athletes face this kind of hate. Trolls have no place in sports. Connecticut Sun star Alyssa Thomas pointed directly at Indiana Fever fans after the team's win in its playoff matchup, while her teammate, Dejanai Carrington, revealed on Instagram an email she had received filled with racial slurs. Let's see what Thomas said. And we've been professional throughout the whole entire thing, but I, I've, I've never been called the things that I've been called on, on social media, and, and, and there's no place for it. And, and you know, basketball is headed in, in, in a great direction, but no, we, we, don't, we don't want fans that are, are going to degrade us and, and call us. It's sad to see players like Thomas face this kind of hate. Race and racism have become frequent talking points relating to Clark's presence and the attention it has brought to women's basketball over the last few years. Clark has been on the receiving end of racially charged comments from fans and prognosticators since her ascent to stardom. ESPN's Pat McAfee referred to Clark as a white beep during an episode of his nationally televised show June 3rd. 
McAfee used the term during a discussion about how much popularity Clark was bringing to the league compared to other players. Let's see what McAfee said about Clark. Football. But I would like the media people that continue to say, this rookie class, this rookie class, this rookie class, not. Nah. Just call it for what it is. There's one white bitch. McAfee, that's rude. You should learn some manners how to respect woman McAfee later regret and apologized. In May, The View host Sonny Hostin said during an episode of that show that Clark's popularity was due in part to white privilege. Meanwhile, several opposing players, including longtime college and pro rival Angel Reese, have claimed to be on the receiving end of racist attacks from WNBA fans. LSU star Angel Reese after being eliminated by Caitlin Clark and Iowa Saeed. So I think it's really just the fans her fans, the Iowa fans, mm -hmm. now the Indiana fans that are like, they ride for her. And I, and I respect that respectfully, but sometimes it's very disrespectful. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of racism when it comes to it. And I don't believe she stands on any of that. But when it comes to death threats, like I'm talking about people have come down to my address, no. follow me home. Like it's come down to that. Multiple occasions, people have made AI pictures of me like naked. Literally. Really? They have sent it to my family members. My family members are like, uncles are sending it to me like, no. are you naked on Instagram? Reese has claimed she has been the victim of widespread online harassment, and it first ramped up when she and her college team, LSU, defeated Clark and Iowa in the 2023 NCAA Women's Basketball Championship game. When LSU held a big lead in the final minutes of that game, Reese pointed to her ring finger in a now infamous photo that angered some of Clark's fans. On her podcast, Reese said that moment changed my life forever. Barstool Sports founder Dave Portnoy reposted a video of the clip with the caption, Classless piece of S. Horn on X. It's a post that had 79.5 million views on X at the time of publication. No matter what people say, let's have a look on Clark's impressive performance. Davis, time winding down. Are they going to get the ball up in time? Clark for the win! Yeah! Oh! She does it time and time again, the 40 piece, and walks off with the W. Listen, this is what Caitlin Clark does, folks. Logo threes, it's her signature. That is the most Caitlin Clark way to win a game. When recent LSU lost in that year's Final Four to Clark in Iowa, Reese cried at the press podium about the threats she had received over the last year. Reese's teammate Haley Van Lith blamed racism for the treatment of Reese at that same press conference. A lot of the people that are making those comments are being racist towards my teammates, Van Lith said. Well, we all know they hate Clark, that's why they always blame her for this. But we all know that's just jealousy towards Clark. Sun player Dijone Carrington, who poked Clark in the eye with her fingernail during Connecticut's Game 1 win over the Fever Sunday, previously criticized Clark for not doing more to call out racism among her own fans in an ex-post in June. Carrington tweeted, In dog, how one can not be bothered by their name being used to justify racism, bigotry, misogyny, xenophobia, homophobia, and the intersectionalities of them all is nuts, Carrington wrote. We all see the essay. We all have a platform. We all have a voice, and they all hold weight. Silence is a luxury. Many fans got disappointed what Carrington did to Clark on court. This can't make it up. Sent to my email. Says, y'all need Jesus. Professor and renowned activist Dr. Chandra Prescott Weinstein, who attended the game, posted on Twitter. I had the misfortune of sharing a row with Lady Misogynoir at tonight's Connecticut Sun game. Photo descriptions, a woman in a blue shirt that says band nails with long paper mocking acrylic nails that are commonly worn by black women and notably by Sun player Dijanae Carrington. Oh. Clark herself became a target during the playoff series. In game one, a foul by Dijanae Carrington left Clark with a black eye, but the physical injury wasn't the only assault she faced. After the last game, Clark revealed she had received an email containing racist slurs and violent threats. On the court, she even confronted a fan in the second row, who was briefly removed by security before being allowed to return. This isn't the first time Clark has addressed fan abuse. 
Earlier in the season, she expressed frustration with the way her popularity had been weaponized to justify hateful behavior. Let's see what Clark response Caitlin Clark stands up for what's right. So people use your name for racism, misogyny, whatever. Yeah. What is your response to that specifically? Yeah, I think it's disappointing. I think, um, you know, everybody in our world, you know, deserves the same amount of respect. The, the women in our league deserve the same amount of respect. So um, I, people should not be using my name to push those agendas demanding respect for all women in the league. She's not afraid to call out those misusing her name to push harmful agendas. Her voice is powerful, reminding everyone that equality and decency should be the standard. Clark's leadership on and off the court is truly inspiring. And Angel Reese knows a ring is coming. The rivalry between Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese is definitely one of the hottest topics in the WNBA right now. Both players had incredible games, but in a recent podcast, Dan Dockich revealed fascinating insights about their rivalry. He said, You know, it is amazing, and this is the stuff that we talked about basically all summer long. It is amazing the impact that Caitlin Clark has. I'm not throwing Angel Reese in there, but others do. And that's a good thing. But Caitlin Clark has literally carried the sport on her back all summer long. Caitlin Clark was the gift. Many fans agree with Dan's words. Caitlin Clark had been amazing this summer and really had been the star of the sport. It's impressive to see how much she's contributed. The Indiana Fever rookie's arrival in the WNBA had signaled a new era for the league. Combined with the Angel Reese rivalry, not only did women's basketball change on a professional level, but also a college level. However, as recent numbers show, these former NCAA superstars have affected men's college basketball as well. Dan Dockich in his latest Don't At Me episode revisits a Fox News Digital article in conversation with two of the top men's recruits in college basketball this year. Let's see what Dan said. No, Caitlin Clark's game resonated. Caitlin Clark's rivalry with Reese resonated. It resonated with me, which means it resonates with men. Their competition inspires many and connects with a wide audience, including strong men. Let's see what Carrie Champion said about Clark and Reese rivalry. The story of Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, the rivalry, which really isn't a bad rivalry or a true rivalry on the court, is a good thing. The rivalry between Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese might not be super intense, but it's still a great storyline for the game. It adds excitement and keeps fans engaged. Dan said, I digress. It also resonated, apparently, with a couple of college basketballs. Number one recruits, Dylan Harper and Ace Bradley, two of It's exciting to see that Caitlin Clark's story is resonating with top recruits like Dylan Harper and Ace Bradley. Their decision to head to Rutgers shows how impactful her game had been. It just goes to show how inspiring she is for the next generation of players. Harper, the number two nationally ranked recruit in the class of 2024, told Fox how he thinks all players are at the end of the day the same, presumably because of their love for basketball. Fox writer Jackson Thompson also mentions how the NCAA women's final had 18.9 million viewers, while the men had 14.8 million. The younger son of former player Ron Harper, Dylan also revealed how he had always followed women's basketball to a degree because his mom coached teams. Meanwhile, Bailey, the number three ranked recruit, told the news network that Reese and Clark were what made him follow women's basketball. But if he gets the chance to talk to either of them, who would he choose? I would probably talk to Angel Reese, her competitiveness for sure. What keeps her driving? Dan said. Or FYI, the women's basketball tournament had 18.9 million viewers, while the men had 14.8 viewers. Ride or die with Caitlin Clark, baby. While many believe, including Dan Dockich, that CeCe has carried women's basketball on her shoulders these last few years, her rivalry with Angel Reese is also what has made it more interesting. But the former basketball pro also believes that the WNBA was not ready for this boom. Well, let's see what Clark said about Reese. I don't think I've ever been her teammate before with even a USA basketball or anything like that. So um, I know people are going to be really excited about it, but I hope it doesn't take away from everybody else. Like, this is a huge accomplishment for um, everybody on Team USA and everybody on Team WNBA. Like, 
Um, they all deserve the same praise. Like, um, I don't want it to take away from any of that and just be the focal point of All-Star Weekend because that's not fair to them. And, you know, obviously this is something that's really hard to accomplish. So the best we can celebrate all of them will be great. And i um, just going to obviously soak in the experience because like, you never know if you're ever going to be able to get back there. And um, it'll be fun for all of us. She is amazing and respectful. How could we not support her? No matter what critics said, let's see Clark record breaking performance. Corrals it, veers into space. Here's Clark. Clark looking to take it around Lloyd. Clark bodies in and finishes. Clark trying to shake Whitcomb. Step back is good. In the mid range for Caitlin Clark. Missed there from Lloyd. Clark the fling ahead. Oh, what a dive. And Mitchell lays it in. And Caitlin Clark officially has the most assists ever. Assist, another get ahead. Caitlin Clark head up right in stride for Kelsey Mitchell. She does not have to alter her speed one bit. Here's Katie Lou Samuelson. Can't hit the three in the corner. Boston the rebound. Clark a good look. She got it. You had this tornado hit, and you weren't ready, says Dan Dockich on Caitlin Clark. Dan Dockich has long been a Caitlin Clark fan, and in the discourse surrounding her popularity in the league, he's usually been on the positive side of it. While some dislike a rookie getting this much attention, others want her to be in the spotlight even more. But Dockich believes that while she's changing the game, the WNBA is not dealing with it properly. Let's see what Dan said in response to her haters. Only should you have known that Caitlin Clark was going to be a star, you should have prepared for it. You should have said, look, this is what is getting ready to happen. So let's do everything to enhance, meaning let's make sure she's on the Olympic team. Let's make sure that other NBA women are smart enough not to be morons to her. But that didn't happen. And they had to go through all of this garbage. I mean, all of this crap. And Kathy Engelbert didn't understand. Dan is right. Caitlin Clark's talent was obvious from the start. And it's frustrating that she wasn't fully supported. And it's disappointing to see her face negativity from others in the league. Caitlin Clark had the option of playing a fifth year for Iowa under the additional COVID-19 year. But she chose to graduate on time and enter the W. While many thought her college success wouldn't translate into success as a professional, the Fever rookie has clearly proven them wrong. So has Angel Reese. With CC leading the league in assists and the Sky player in rebounds at one point in time, their rookie year has sensationalized the sport, even influencing the men's side of it. And it's only the beginning. Because the African-American lesbian players were going overboard in their racism and sexism on Caitlin Clark. Lynn and the WNBA had to send different videos at all to the league to get this crap to stop. And the league has, for the most part, stopped. This shocking admission reveals the internal struggles that Caitlin Clark has faced, not just from the fans, but even from within the WNBA itself. It's hard to believe, but the racism and sexism directed at her were so rampant that the league had to step in. Well, it seems on some social media channels to have taken a darker turn, a more menacing turn, where race has been introduced into the conversation, where sexuality is sometimes in introduced into the conversation. How do you try and stay ahead of that, uh, try and tamp it down, or act as a league when two of your most visible players are involved, not personally, it would seem, but their fan bases are involved in saying some very uncharitable things. Well, this was the turning point when the conversations around Caitlin Clark's performance started moving away from basketball and into darker territory. Race and sexuality became the focus of an escalating controversy. The One other. thing that's great about the league right now, we do sit at this intersection of of culture and sport and fashion and music like the WNBA players are really looked at now as cultural icons. True. And when you have that, you oh have boy. a lot of attention on you. There's no more apathy. Everybody cares. It is a little that bird magic moment, if you recall, from 1979 when those two rookies came in from a big college rivalry, one white, one black, 
And so we have that moment with these two. But While Engelbert tries to frame this as a historic rivalry moment, it's far from that. The issues surrounding Clark and her competitors aren't just about sports. It's a reflection of the larger problems in the league. Well, I mean, might as well. Caitlin Clark, they got their ass beat last night. But, man, Charles Barkley said this a couple days ago that the WNBA could not have effed this up more. Kathy Engelbert, who is the commissioner, is facing criticism from members of the Players Association for not condemning racism and homophobia, which was, of course, and inevitably tied back. To Caitlin Clark. Barkley lays it all out. This was a failure on multiple levels, and now Clark is at the center of it all. The league's inability to handle these tensions has left everyone watching. You answered them in private. Awful announcing said her response was not only lackluster.